Ladies and gentlemen, today is Wednesday, the 17th of August, and today Mojang released a new snapshot for Minecraft 1.11. This one is called Minecraft Snapshot 16W33A. As I mentioned in my update on the previous snapshots, most of the interesting stuff is being kept for Minecon, which takes place about a month from now, but there are still some interesting changes and a whole load of bug fixes in this one, so let's dive right in. Shields will now keep their enchantment level and durability if you craft it with a banner. More items will now burn as fuel in a furnace. This includes wool, which burns for 100 ticks, which means that it can smelt half of an item. Carpet burns for 66 ticks, which means it can smelt just shy of one third of an item. That means if you stick three carpets into a furnace, it will burn almost enough to smelt one entire item, but not quite. The arrow will visually fill up all the way, but the item won't actually smelt. Ladders burn for 233 ticks, which comes out to just shy of one and a sixth of an item. Balls and wooden buttons, 100 ticks, half an item. Bows and fishing rods, 300 ticks, which is one and a half items. Signs and wooden doors of any kind, 200 ticks, that's exactly one item's worth of burning time, and any type of boat, 400 ticks, that is two items worth. Other crafting changes, in the previous version you were unable to dye a banner, that has now been fixed, so the dyeing recipe works again. And if you shift clicked items out of crafting and out of furnaces, there were a number of problems. You wouldn't receive XP properly, and that has been fixed. And if you were supposed to get an achievement by making that item, you wouldn't unlock that achievement if you shift click the item out of the crafting table. And that has now been sorted out as well. New error message has been introduced if you are too far away from a bed when you click on it. It will now show you the message, you may not rest now, the bed is too far away. Previously, if you tried to sleep, it would not let you sleep, but you would also not get any error message. Name tags wouldn't use on entities with a right-click ability. Most notably, you couldn't name a villager with a name tag. That is, if the villager was fully grown and without using workarounds like standing inside of a portal. Now that's fixed, so just right-click with a name tag on a villager to name it. Another significant bug that has been fixed is that you couldn't eat, throw or shoot while looking at an iron door or trap door. This will break most currently used designs for auto fishing stations. One last thing with trying to use items. If you try to use an item that you couldn't use, the item would bob up and down and that has been sorted out as well. While holding things in your offhand, the main hand's item use animation would play if you were in third person mode and fishing rods didn't appear to be cast if you held it in your offhand. And on the subject of all of this fishing, when you were fishing you would also not get enchanted books in the previous version, and now you can do that magical fishing again. Farmer villagers, they used to have non-random trades for apples and cookies, that was 5 apples and 6 cookies. They will now sell 5 to 7 apples and 6 to 10 cookies. Let's talk a bit about other mobs. Elder Guardians used to drop dry sponge, they now drop wet sponge instead. Skeletons, strays, wither skeletons with tipped arrows in their offhand would no longer shoot that tipped arrow. Now they do again. Also, wither skeletons and zombie pigmen would emit a constant hissing, even if they're not on fire. If, catch this, they were standing on a submerged fence. Now that's an edge case. Also, husks and zombie villagers no longer drop zombie heads when killed by charged creepers. Either that is just a straight all bug fix, or it could also be a preparation for new types of mob heads to be introduced later on. The previous version would not be able to load resource packs if they were in a folder instead of a zip. That has now been fixed, so resource packs in folders work in this version. Also, they've added a new error message if you try to load a broken resource pack. In addition to this, there's some minor fixes like double grass and fern using two different biome colors for the top and bottom blocks, some spelling errors in the debug screens, fixes for a few different subtitles, and a few sounds that wouldn't play properly in certain situations. Last but not least, this version also contains a couple of fixes for crashes that were reported in. Even with that, this is still a development version, so keep that in mind if you try it out. It can still crash or even corrupt your world, so if you try it, do so on a test world or on a backup of your world. If you want to try it, head into your Minecraft launcher, create a new profile and select Enable Experimental Development Versions Snapshots. Now save, start the game using that profile and you will be playing the latest snapshot version, which is currently this one, 16W33A.
If you want to stay up to date with all the snapshot news, then feel free to subscribe to my channel where there will be update videos for every single new version or snapshot released. And keep an eye on the Minecraft news playlist. My name is Sliced Lime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.